Hello, my name is Meganova, and this is Pillow Talk, the series where I talk about anything that I have recently watched or played. And uh, I'm sorry that I've been away for uh, for so long. I haven't been feeling too great, so I haven't really had the motivation to actually turn on the webcam up. Barely had the motivation to go outside and uh, do stuff with uh, with other people. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a bit, eh. but I I'm trying to get back into it now. Uh, I'll I'll try to start doing some more streams again and all that stuff. But okay, all that aside, um, Infinity War. So, uh, the title is going to be a bit misleading this time because I didn't just watch it, I watched it like two weeks ago. Um, but, uh, it's still very uh, clear in my memory, especially because I have spent so much time watching other people's videos about it. Um, so... Yeah, I've I've watched so many other videos with people talking about it and stuff and at one point I was even like, eh, I don't know if I should even make a video at this point because so many other people have made it and it might not be relevant anymore, but no, I I still want to get uh get my opinion out there for anyone who might care. It's probably too late now because everybody's going to be Focusing on other things like Deadpool 2, which is coming out, uh, which I'm actually going to be going to watch in about three hours. So, and I will try to make a video on that a bit quicker than this one. Um, but yeah, Infinity War. I thought it was absolutely stellar. Like, it was just... I, uh, without a doubt, this is the best Marvel movie so far at this point in time. Like, absolutely the best Marvel movie. Um, but, of course, with the caveat that you have watched most of the MCU before. Like, obviously, you don't have to have watched the TV, the, the TV shows because... Those don't really tie in, at least not with anything, like, major. Not really. Uh, the TV shows seem to f function in their own kind of world without too much interference from what happens in the movies. Other than in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I still haven't gotten into them yet. Like, I finished Agent Carter Season 1 and 2. Um, but I... For whatever reason, haven't got myself to uh, watch more of the other shows. I will, though. My plan is that at the start of next month, I will focusing uh, I will focus on watching all of the Marvel TV shows, and possibly also rewatch some of the older movies and make videos on those just to put my thoughts out on uh, on those as well. Um, but we'll see when we get when we get there. I I haven't really m mapped my plans out yet, but we we'll see, and I'll hope I can stick to that schedule. Okay, but in, enough dallying around here. Infinity War, absolutely amazing movie. Um, I mean, it does stand on its own. I will say. Like, yes, obviously, uh, you aren't really introduced to many of these characters, but if you know the characters already uh, from, uh, from other things, like if you've read the comics or just heard about them, I feel like that's overall enough for you to, like, get the idea of what is going on. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, I feel like that, th that would be fine overall. Um, but yeah, so, most people have already, uh, have probably already watched it. 
But uh, to give like a quick summary of of the plot of the movie without giving too many spoilers in case you haven't watched it yet, I I, I will try from now on. Um, I will start with a non-spoiler section and then later I will go into an actual spoiler section. I'm still figuring out how I'm going to structure it and, and stuff, but... Okay, so, main plot, uh, Thanos, he has his, uh, uh, Infinity Gauntlet, and he is, uh, going around collecting the stones. Um, of which he has one at the moment, and there's another one that he gets in the start of the movie. And, without giving too much away, by the end of the movie, he has collected all of them. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, but, yeah, okay, so, start of the movie, um, starts off right when Ragnarok ended. Also, another thing I should probably mention in terms of the other thing, my opinion of the movie hasn't changed at all, despite me having watched so many videos of differing opinions from uh, other people. So, don't worry, it, it hasn't colored my perception of the movie. This is exactly what I thought of it when I got out of the theater still. It's just been a long time. But never mind that. Starts there, and things are pretty fucked. And uh, it ends up, uh, and Hulk ends up being sent down to, um, by, uh, by Heimdall. He's, uh, he gets sent down to uh, Doctor Strange's place. And from there off, he... If, if you've read the comic, basically, um, Hulk acts as Silver Surfer in, uh, in this case. Where he meets up with Doctor Strange and tells him about what is going on. That Thanos is, uh... Is mobilizing himself and collecting all the gems and uh, things are looking pretty fucking bleak. <clears throat> because <clears throat> in the start of the movie, Hulk basically gets bodied by Thanos. Like, he tries to fight Thanos and Thanos just says, uh, ah, ah. And he just smacks him around. Like, Hulk gets a couple hits, uh, clean hits in at first. Mostly because he caught Thanos by surprise. But once Thanos regains his composure, he just smacks him. Which is why Hulk, uh, Banner can't turn into the Hulk for the rest of the movie. Because the Hulk is... The Hulk is basically now... I, I don't know if we could say he has PTSD, but it was pretty traumatic for him. He's never been beaten this way before like yes he was technically he, he was beaten by uh by the hulkbuster armor back in uh in 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 age of ultron but at least there it was a long fight and hulk uh, hulk at least pr probably he probably felt like yeah he could have won if it had gone in, in another way, but he just didn't stand a chance against Thanos. At all. Like, Thanos beats him in, in about a minute. Like, he just gets fucked. Um, so, Banner, he's having to uh, deal with that thing. I, I hope Hulk gets over this in the next movie. But... We'll see. I, I'm thinking that's going to be one of the things that he finally uh, gets through and then he can start fighting as the Hulk again. Something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. Nobody knows, except for the writers, I guess. Um, so, <clears throat> he gets down there and it just so happens that... that um, Oh no no it no it doesn't it doesn't actually because Doctor Strange it, Doctor Strange makes a uh, after he's told all this Doctor Strange makes a portal to um 
to Tony Stark, who is uh, talking with uh, Pepper about that. Oh, he had a dream about that they had a child. He's basically m- making this very roundabout thing where he is try basically trying to convince her that they should get a kid, that they should have a child together. Um. And where she has, she's been like, oh yeah, but you have to promise me that all this superhero business is behind you. And he's like, oh yeah, completely. No surprises or anything. And then Dr. Strange shows up. And yeah, things just start getting fucked from there. Oh, okay, I'm not going to summarize the entire movie like this. But uh, this ends up resulting in them fighting with uh, some of Thanos' minions. Don't remember their names, but one is called was called Squidward by Tony at one point, so I'm just gonna refer to him as that. And the other, I, I'm not sure what I should call him, but he's like a big, big buff dude. Uh, Spider Man shows up because he sees the big round spaceship in the sky. Actually, that's a thing I think is pretty interesting, and I think it's kind of a funny subversion how they did that in a trailer. Because the way it seemed in the trailer was that the big round spaceship thing, they made it seem like, oh, this is going to be like a portal that Thanos is going to walk through or something. But no, it's just a big round spaceship. And I I thought that was a pretty funny convert, uh, n- not conversion, um, subversion of our expectations. Like, I did not expect that it, th- that was what it would be. But uh, it was uh, pretty interesting, especially with the way it was cut and you see where uh, Thor is standing, holding the things. Um, It looks like he's standing in the portal and doing something there, trying to close it or whatever. But no, it's nothing to do with that. Okay, so they fight them. Uh, It gets fucked. Uh, They end up... um, they end up kidnapping Doctor Strange because he has a time stone in his necklace. And Spider-Man and um, uh, an Iron Man ends up on the ship. And uh, uh, the, also, I think it's pretty genius how uh, basically they have about three groups that ends up uh, being together. Um, they have Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, Iron Man, which are later joined by the Guardians of the Galaxy. They have all these people together. Uh, where Thor is as well, actually, but Thor ends up going his own way later on. Um, or, well, uh, actually, Thor joins up with Guardians of the Galaxy, where he later takes off. Uh, with uh, Rocket and Groot because he has to go and forge a new weapon which is actually where the his trailer part comes in because he has to fucking tank the power of a star in order to forge his weapon like it, for to, I heard some people talk about oh this is going back on his character progression where he lost his weapons, and so now he can ju- use the power for himself. No! He didn't lose any character progression. He just gained a more powerful weapon. That's it. He's just even more powerful now. He's not going back on anything. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, off oh, the problem is because there is all these intersecting uh, stories going on. There, it, it can get a bit cluttered trying to explain the movie properly. Um. Okay, but also I do really admire how the Russo brothers were able to keep the same kind of tone. And feel for each group and for all the characters. Like when you see the Guardians of the Galaxy, it feels like that this is just Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Like this is just a, 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 a Guardians of the Galaxy movie here. 
Um, because it starts with one of those old cheesy 80s songs. I don't remember which one. I don't think it's one I'm very familiar with. But it starts with one of those. And they're singing and having fun and talking about, oh, we're going on this bounty hunt. And we're going to steal their ship if they don't pay us. And all kinds of fun shit like that. But they, they, uh, they receive a distress call, which is from Thor, because, you know, everything got fucked over there. Not gonna spoil anything there, as I said earlier, I'm not gonna spoil what happens yet, but things are pretty bleak. Uh, they go and pick up Thor, and, uh, there's some pretty funny lines there. The funniest thing is that uh, star is like, oh, something about, oh, uh, and this dude, or whatever, and then uh, Drax is just like, this, this is not a dude. You're a dude. This is a man. A strong, handsome man. <laughs> and he's just, like, admiring how big and muscular he is. And it leads into some kind of jokes about how Star-Lord is kind of getting a bit chubby. And uh, it's kind of ruining his self-esteem as a man. Um, uh, I'm really not very good at, 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 at summarizing this movie. Uh, there's, there's so many things. But basically, the protagonist of this movie is Thanos. This is Thanos' movie. Like, he is basically the antagonist and the protagonist at the same time. Because everything that happens in this movie is as a result of him. But he's also the character, by far, that has the most screen time out of everyone. Um... Like, you fo uh, you follow his journey. You don't even see how he gets two of the gems, actually. Uh, I mean, one of them is the one being held by the Nova Corps, if I remember right. And another one is one of those, is uh, the one he held by the... Um, I think that's a reality gem. It's the one held by the Collector. Who I believe he has actually killed. I don't remember if you actually see see his body, but I'm pretty sure he killed him. I know I said no spoilers, but this is like... It's a very minor character. I don't see it. That's not too important. Um, some fucked up shit happens when they go to nowhere to the collector. Uh, and... Uh, Oh yeah, of course. Uh, we also see Vision and Scarlet Witch. They are trying to make a life for themselves in Czech, I think it is. I'm not, I'm not sure where in in the world they are. It's somewhere in Europe, I think. Don't remember where it said that they were, but they were far far away, anyways. Um. But they then also get attacked by Thanos' uh, lieutenants. But are then we then find out that uh, base, uh, 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 Cap and um, Cap uh, uh, Black Widow, who's now a blonde with short hair, uh, Falcon. That's the one. Falcon. And I don't remember if there was a last one. I might be an idiot, but I don't remember if there was uh, more. And they then meet up and fight them together and push them back. Uh, that's actually also another funny thing they did with the trailer. Without spoiling too much, you see... Uh, you in the in the trailer, you see the you you have the scene where uh, they have the staff on Vision's forehead, trying to extract the the gem from his forehead, the Mind Stone. Um, but uh, which 
is, is, is happening in this scene, but they don't actually get the stone from him there. Which I think was another fun subversion. It's like, oh, you think he's going to have it just taken here, but no, no. That happens later. They team up, they end up going to the headquarters because Vision was very heavily damaged. Uh, he was very heavily hurt in this fight. They take him to the new uh, Avengers headquarters <clears throat> where they meet up with War Machine, where he is uh, in like this hologram conference call with uh, Thunderbolt, uh, Ross, G General Ross. Uh, of course, when he sees them, he's like, oh, you should arrest them. And then uh, he's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. He turns off the call and says, like, hey, welcome back. Nice to see you. He goes, well, he, just, he doesn't give a fuck about that guy, of course, because he's a complete knobend. And they're trying to figure out, oh, we should try and get the Mind Stone off of him without hurting him. Because they figure that well, the Mind Stone isn't everything holding him together. Like, there's also a, a, everything else about him, so he should be able to function without it. Um, and it, which and ends up making them think, hey, we should go to Wakanda, because they have, like, extremely sophisticated technology there, because they can't figure out how to do it there. Um, also, Hulk is with them now, here. Uh, and yet, yeah, because, um, Banner, uh, I, I'm saying Hulk, but it, it's Banner, and uh, he ends up going, finding Ca uh, Cap, because Tony just can't make himself call Cap, because it's just like, I guess he kind of has like an anx anx anxiety that it's going to be weird in some way or whatever. He just can't make himself call him up. So Banner does it instead. Um, and then they go there, they go to Wakanda, and as we see, there's this big grand fight while they're trying to get the Mind Stone out. And... Uh, fuck me, I'm, I, 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 did, I did end up actually just fucking summarizing the entire fucking movie. Or a lot of it is... It's two and a half hours after all. Um, but it doesn't feel like two and a half hours at all. Like, at the end of the movie, I was sitting there, oh, where's it gonna go from here? I was fully ready to sit there for like an hour or two more. Like, it was, it was fucking great, but then it just ends with like, what the fuck? Okay. Um, okay, so try. I'm going to try to speed through it a bit more. So they have their big fight there. Thor has uh, departed from the uh, Guardians with uh, Groot and Raccoon. They go to this thing where the star has died because Thanos was there, because that's where the Infinity Gauntlet was made. And there's only one dwarf left. Uh, E-Tree, I think, I re remember is his name, I think, played by Peter Dinklage, and it's... Really hard not to just think, oh, it's Peter Dinklage in the movie, because he's just... He's just one of those actors where it's like, you can you, you can just see him as Peter Dinklage. Although he his role here does seem to be a bit more nuanced than what he usually does. Like, he's not as snarky and sarcastic, he's... He's kind of meek, which is really weird because you're you're just used to see him being this kind of bombastic, sarcastic asshole. Well, at least if you're mostly familiar with him through Game of Thrones, as I am. But you know, um, uh, yeah, he has to go uh, to get a new weapon, and the star has died, which is why Thor has to help basically start the whole thing back up. Uh, from which, after that, he goes to Wakanda and helps them fight there. And he makes... <laughs> no pun... Like... I know it sounds cheesy considering what he is, but he makes the most 
godly entrance. Like, he just lands there, flies up into the air, and there's lightning everywhere, and it just... Oh, it was so fucking epic, and I nerded out so fucking hard in that seat. Oh, it was good. It was so great. Oh, it's just... Wow. Um, on the other ship, they end up killing Squidward. Uh, on the other ship with Spider-Man and uh, Tony and Doctor Strange, they end up killing Squidward. Then they meet up with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and they, of course, don't know each other, so they try to fight each other. But they then figure out, oh, we're actually both trying to fight against Thanos. So, they, of course, they team up then. They end up going to Titan, to, to, uh, to uh, Thanos' home planet. Or, Titan is on one of Saturn's moons. So, it's not exactly, it's not a planet as such, but details. Um... They fight him there, end up get it, getting their ass handed to them. He, Thanos then goes to Wakanda and fucks them up and shit happens. Okay, now I'm going to go into like the heavy... I know I spoiled a few things, but now I'm going to go into some heavy spoiler territory. Holy shit, say 26 minutes? Fuck! And I also have to get, get going soon because there's only like two hours until my uh, Deadpool 2 starts. Okay, so, spoiler parts. Thanos' motivation is that there's no Lady Death in this version of the story. So, his motivation is his planet originally star uh, got ruined because of overpopulation. Which then leads him to believe that if he can destroy... A, or uh, he he already back then he suggested, hey, if if we kill half the population, like just at random, we we're not we're not gonna take anyone in anything into account. Just kill off half of everyone, then we should be able to go on the resources we have. And I mean. I can sympathize with this logic. It's faulty logic, especially considering the power of the Infinity uh, Gauntlet. Like, as many other people have uh, pointed out, and I was thinking this as well, he could just make more resources, really. Um... He, or he, he could eliminate disease or whatever. Like, he, there's... Plenty of other things he could have done instead. But you also have to... But, but that's not necessarily bad writing. Because you can't expect everyone to be... Su every person to be super smart. That's bad writing, having everyone be super smart. Because that's, that's just unrealistic. And I know it's the, it's the superheroes and shit, but... Thanos was never, never depicted as a super mind. Like, sure, he's supposed to be, like, a good strategist and stuff, but he was never supposed to be, like, super intelligent in every way. So it's, it feels believable that this is the conclusion he would come to. I had overpopulation on my planet, so if we kill... Uh, kill half of everyone, then that would save everyone, or everyone left, at least. And you do gain a level of respect for him during this, which is also why that he is the best villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe at this point. You, act you get to know him. You get to know why he does what he does. And it's, it's just really interesting and ex extremely compelling. Like, I, it's, it's one of the best villains I have seen in a superhero movie ever. Like, ever. Like, it's, it's kind of like with Killmonger in uh, Black Panther. You, f you understand why he wants to do what he, 
what he wants to do, you don't agree with him. Like, there's better ways to go about it, but you understand his reasoning. Like, you understand why he's doing it. You just don't agree with his methods. And I think those are the best and most interesting types of villains. I mean, yes, my favorite Final Fantasy villain is Ke is Kefka, and he seems to be like evil for evil's sake, because he's like he's just insane, and because of that, he wants to kill everyone and destroy everything. Like, it's not very interesting, but it is fun in a way. Like, you you just have this person who just can't be reasoned with. He's just so far gone. Uh, it's also one of the compelling things about, like, the Joker. But th there's also a lot of other nuances to the Joker with his relationship to Batman and stuff. But that's a completely different video. Um, but Thanos is one of those, it's just like, you get him. You don't agree well, okay, I'm I'm going to stop. I'm just repeating myself now, and the video is, has gone on long enough as it is. Um, also, Thor gets his new weapon, Stormbreaker, which is an axe, or I guess an axe and a hammer? Like, it has an axe blade on one side and a hammer uh, bit on, on the other side, I guess. Lots of, uh, a lot of other people seem to still refer to it as a hammer, but it's not a hammer. Or, well, 50% a hammer, I guess. But he's mostly using the axe part. Um, and also, fucking everybody dies! And I have a lot of respect for Marvel, or I guess especially the Russo brothers, and, Dis uh, and Disney for letting them do this. Like, I have a lot of respect for them, for going through with this, like, of course we know, uh, us people who have, who know about the comics, like, sure, not all of the events are exactly like the comics, but a lot is like the comics, and we get the snap, like, we get the snap, and it was glorious. Also, I love how all the deaths are really understated. Like, it's, nobody seems to be, like, in great pain or anything. There's no, like, oh, I'm disappearing or anything. Like, it's just, like, it's it's really well summarized. I, don't, I think it was Peter, no, 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 it's, it's Bucky who says, it, who says to Cap, like, Cap, I don't feel very good, uh, I don't feel so good. And then he starts to turn into Ash. And that summarizes this entire scene. Like, like you have this scene that is like, I think 10 minutes, 5 or 10 minutes at the end, where you just see each important character that gets turned into Ash, turn into Ash, and just disappear. And you get this extremely emotional scene and once again i'm gonna give some props to to uh, tom holland because tom holland he is he's great i love that he's the new spider-man because he just does phenomenal with this role and he's on titan with tony and he's just you can just feel how scared he is that he's going to die <clears throat> because he sees everybody else turn into dust and he knows that it's gonna it's about to happen to him too and i get you you kind of feel the same that you do in 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 homecoming where you see uh where, where uh P peter is stuck under all this rubble from this building where he's just like you just you can feel his desperation tom holland is really good at making you feel just how desperate his character is. I'm, I'm going to give him major props for that. It was... It was sublime. I fucking loved it. 
Like this scene. Oh my god, this scene. Just. I can't even describe it. It's something you have to see for yourself. To just understand. Just how. It's, it's, it's just incredible. Like it's, it's just downright incredible. It's. It's great. The entire movie is amazing. Just, if you have just any, any middling interest in any of this, you should absolutely go watch it. Absolutely. It's a glowing recommendation from, from, from me. Absolutely. Best Marvel movie. Best, uh... Best villain. There is one part that I am very split on. On one part, I kind of love it. On another part, uh, it's the part on Titan where they're all holding on to Thanos. Like, you have Iron Man and Spider-Man on one side trying to pull off the gauntlet. You have Mantis sitting on top of him. <laughs> Uh, trying to make him uh, go to sleep, or at least relax. Um, and you have someone holding the other arm. I don't remember who or how. Also, at this point... Yeah, uh, also... Yeah, before I talk about that, we have to talk about when Thanos gets the soul gem. Or the soul stone. Which made, just made me think of Diablo every time I heard Soul Stone. That, that word just makes me think of Diablo too much, but that's so completely different. Um, he has to sacrifice Gamora to get the Soul Stone, because she's the only thing in this universe that he loves. And... I've heard some people be like, oh, but he doesn't actually love her, uh, love her. That's not real love. But I don't think that's the point. The point is, in his mind, it's love. And he loves her in his own way. And I think that's enough in this case. It counts, basically. And yeah. He ends up having to sacrifice her, which then leads up into this. I'm just going to pick up from where I was. Where, and I think they kind of wrote themselves into a corner because it's like, well, everything is working. Oh, it's Doctor Strange who is magically holding on to uh, Thanos' uh, uh, right arm. That's That was what was going on there. <laughs> Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, and then, uh, Star-Lord, he's like, well, where's Gamora? You, you, you left with her, but now she's not here. Where is she? Is she alive? And you just feel Thanos' pain, like, he's just, he's... Oh, it's, it, this is destroying him from the inside. And basically, e even though he's kind of subdued by Mantis, Mantis is also telling that, oh, he, he feels a lot of regret. regret. He's mourning right now. <sighs> and Star-Lord is like, yeah, it's kind of fucked up. And then he starts punching him. And... While it's consistent with his character, as you saw in the last movie, as soon as he found out that his dad has killed his mom by putting a tumor into her head, he just immediately starts shooting at him. Which, why didn't he shoot at Thanos? He had both his guns. Why was he punching Thanos with his guns in hand? Why was he punching him? He should have just shot at him. Also, like, the fate of the universe is in their hands. Star-Lord isn't supposed to be this much of an idiot. Like, it's, it's kinda, 
uh, in character, but still not because I believe he would be like, hey, okay, yes, I'm mad. But the fate of the universe is kind of on the line here. Maybe I should hold back a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit split on this, but uh, meh. it's one of those movies where all the other parts are so good that I'll let this one slide. It's fine. It's not too bad. I'm okay with it. But holy shit, this is forty minutes. Yeah, and I didn't end up up summarizing most of the movie. Fuck me. Okay, but yes, overall, great fucking movie. I'll give it like nine and a half stars, I guess, because I'm so split on the whole Star Lord scene thing that I can't, I can't give it like a perfect ten or whatever. But it is a sublime movie overall. Absolutely, go watch it. I am going to get ready to go and watch Deadpool 2. I will do my best to make a video quickly of this one. Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, got all my social medias down in the description. If you want to follow me on everything, if you are so inclined, inclined to maybe give a little bit to me on my Patreon so my life can get a little bit f more fun to live. I would greatly appreciate that, and that would also maybe <laughs> uh, motivate me to keep going some more and maybe get do some more interesting kinds of videos. I am thinking of that I kind of want to do some like editorial kind of videos where I just talk about stuff like concepts and things, not necessarily shows and movies themselves, but I'm not sure if I'm smart enough. To talk about any of those things, but I guess I'll try. I do I do a lot of philosophizing and shit in my off time, which is all my t time. But that's another completely other thing. So yes, I if you made it this far, thank you. Um, and yeah, go watch this movie. It's super amazing and. I will see you out on the high seas. <laughs> Yar.